to thank you for this collabora close collaboration between our two teams within a partnership that has made it possible to prepare and organize this session, which brings us together today to think, debate and exchange ideas based on our experience and our practices in, within the local governments on this issue of social solidarity economy. Because let's remind it the fact that the social partnership is uh, strongly emerging today. And this response to the unsatisfied or unmet needs in the field of so in the social field and the field of employment. So some NGOs want to create jobs for the people who are excluded from the uh, traditional labor market. And also there's some individual entrepreneurs who want to lead some companies within a social perspective. Also, let's remind the fact that PEFELA has put at the heart of its agenda, not only the launch, but also the implementation and follow-up of the campaign of African cities that are favorable to economic empowerment of women. And for REFELA, GSEF represents a lever for the empowerment of women in and social solidarity economy because women are convinced that this sector is an important element to bring women out from out of the informal sector uh, by offer, offering them local empowerment and economic empowerment uh, that is up to their potential. Of course, we are still fighting the COVID pandemic and we know that this pandemic is increasing the local disparities, everything, everywhere around the world, and in particular in Africa. And in this case, in particular, the local governments are in the front line to face up to the challenges, to uh, limit this pandemic, but also the local governments have to face up to the challenges posed by the economic crisis that has been generated. We hope that this session will be an opportunity to debate about the obstacles and uh, we shall talk about the macro enterprises within the products that are income generating projects, often supported by the governments and the development partners. So the, non the knowledge and the limitations of the potential of female led companies and the limitations of access to, of women to funding is, should be analyzed. So this session should also be an opportunity to share the best practices and to draw the lessons in order to act differently and meet the aspirations for equality of the Africa we want in the post-COVID era. So I would like to thank on this occasion, all the participants, all the players, all the speakers who will enrich the debate with their expertise. So I wish you success to our work in this session. Thank you for your attention. I will now, after this introduction, into the welcome, welcome remarks, give the floor to Madam Secretary General of the GSEF for their uh, welcoming remarks. Madam Secretary General, you have the floor. So the floor is given to my, my, Mrs. Rahmat Akwaso, Councillor for Political affairs at UCLG Africa. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Person, Madam Secretary General, Madam the President of Refela, dear representatives, dear participants, rather, it's my pleasure to present to represent Mr. Jean-Pierre Elangbessy, Secretary General of UCLG Africa, who could not join us but who, who sup will support all the findings of this session. On the International Day of Women, he said, quote, thinking of equality should be interpreted as the effort to understand the concrete situation of inequalities between genders. And we have to take this differentiated starting point in order to offer the appropriate solutions in order to uh, have equality 
that is socially conceivable and possible. If this requires positive discrimination policies that are favorable to women, we should not exclude such policies in the name of uh, gender equality, unquote. So I have mentioned Mr. Mbassi to show how he is convinced, and through him, the whole UCLG Africa organization is convinced of the need to work for equality between men and women. This, by, this is, by the way, the attitude that is recommended by Rafaela, the network of local elected women in Africa. We, uh, in, there's a need for a change in political governance in Africa. And when Rafaela has launched the campaign of cities favorable to the economic empowerment of women, this is also the reason why Rafaela suggests more than ever the uh, achievement of SDG 5, 4 and 5, and encourages all the national governments and all, as, as well as the, all the players to uh, achieve those goals as the SDG 4 and 5. Given this context of a world global pandemic that has shown how much our economies are fragile, not equalitarian and non-inclusive, this social and economic crisis uh, put, places a special emphasis on the women. By, 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 uh, on the other hand, the social re repercussions or spin-offs of the pandemic affect disproportionately women around the world, whether gender-based violence or the unfavorable position of women in the job market. Given the fact that they assure most of the health care, uh, we have to we have to change, we need the economic paradigm shift and we need alternative and ambitious models. So it seems relevant to explore how social solidarity economy can position itself given those challenges and be part of the solutions and the alternatives to the dominant and traditional model. This social solidarity economy creates an open niche, niches of opportunity the social solidarity economy will contribute to the economic empowerment of women if the conditions to do so are put in place and if the formulation of pub local public policies integrates those community-based approaches. We need some instruments and we need some supporting measures. Investing in female entrepreneurship in Africa is a strong, is an investment that makes sense because women are not only the future of Africa, but that the present of Africa used to be said by the president of Mr. Gumi, the president of the African Development Bank. Most of the women who are in a working age launch in self-entrepreneurship compared, uh, France has only 5%, uh, who says the uh, academician Roland Berger. So these women choose entrepreneurship, not by passion, but by ob economic obligation but only 4% of uh, women entrepreneurs have access, uh, access to a loan, bank loan. So this is very, uh, makes them very dependent from the financial standpoint. In Sub-Saharan Africa, social and solidarity-based entrepreneurship offers a powerful uh, alternative to women uh, compared to wage earning uh, jobs. So women need to be uh, the actors of development, sustainable development in Africa. Let's uh, uh, engage ourselves, let's commit ourselves for, with the new generations so that there is equality between generations and between territories. And let's make the most of this opportunity to strengthen the local activities and make a systemic change in favor of women all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Rahmatoka. So, representing Mr. Elong Massey, Secretary General of UCLG Africa, for your comment or your speech that goes in the sense of bringing all the support of UCLG Africa and in particular of Mr. Secretary General to this initiative, which is in the social and solidarity economy, uh, an avenue to give back to women the place as unavoidable actor of economic sustainable development in Africa. So thank you once again, and we shall try to reach Madam Secretary General of the GCEF. I don't know if now, yes, good morning. 
Good morning, Madam Secretary General. You have the floor. You have the floor. Good morning, Mrs. Moderator. Good afternoon and good evening to all of you. Welcome to the webinar organized by Refela and UCLG Africa in partnership with the GCEF and the Virtual Global Forum 2020, themed the great challenges need for solidarity, the power of social solidarity economy as a way for transformation, which seems which concerns more than 19,000 people in 100 countries since uh, who have joined us uh, since uh, early October. Let me first of all to thank you for this collaboration between Rafaela and the GSEF. And I would like also to thank Mrs. Annie Christelle Limb Limbourg, uh, Deputy Mayor of Libreville, member of the Rafaela Caucus for Central Africa. Mrs. Rahmatoukasso, Councillor for Political Affairs and International Affairs at UCLG Africa, Dr. Melika Georgi Rafaran, Special Advisor of Refela to Refela, of Refela to UCLG Africa, and to the outstanding speakers, in particular, Mr. Sheikhe, first deputy to the city of Dakar and Mr. Al Masabi, Vice President of the Oriental Region, Morocco, Mr. Sergio Castana from Spain. I also would like to welcome all the participants and members of REFELA who have joined this session. This session on, on social eco solidarity economy uh, organized by REFELA uh, as a lever for empowerment of women in Africa is an initiative I would like to commend for the implementation of your commitment during the Africities uh, Nova, um, Summit in November 2018 in Marrakesh. And, and you have to know that social solidarity economy will be uh, important lever for the empowerment of women in Africa, as we saw in many other countries, Europe, Canada, and Korea. So Africa today is uh, as an optimistic period of its uh, history, but also, also at a crossroads. People generate more resources than they can invest in resources and human development. But uh, economic, important economic uh, growth, how can we have some equitable or fair distribution of the revenues of prosperity for all? And given all those issues in the con actual, actual context, current context of COVID-19, which increases the blatant uh, disparities, that uh, affect hundreds of millions of people. I think that the local elected officials and the political decision makers are looking for alternatives that will reconcile economic uh, goals with social growth. For us, this alternative growth lies in the Social Solidarity Economy, SSE. And this shows, turns out to be a very resilient strategy that can meet all the, the crises social and economic crisis, in particular, uh, when there is a major crisis like the crisis of 2008 and currently after the crisis of COVID-19. So Africa should mobilize its energy and the creativity of African women and especially of African women through the empowerment of African women, which is a major challenge in order to reach their full potential in order to face up to this challenge, major challenge, the role of every uh, is fundamental because the elected, uh, elected officials have to be the promoters and the conductors given the central role they're playing in the development of municipalities and the, the, the countries and the citizens of their country. And they can integrate quickly this question in the development plans, local and national plans. So most African women are working as entrepreneurs rather than micro enterprises of the social or the informal sector. So they are, wait, they are waiting for public policies that meet their needs. Let's re raise, let's lift the obstacles and the difficult difficulties of access to the financial services and to the markets. And we have to mention the challenges related to the uh, how to combine family and business and how to be productive 
and how to become the engines of inclusive growth. Now I, I look forward to listening to your proposals to meet their expectations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Madam Secretary General. In the name of Rafaela, we would like already to congratulate you for the GCF 2020 Forum that is organized by you and which allows us to consolidate the partnership between the GCF platform and Rafaela under the implementation of the Social and Solidarity Economy SAC as a platform. We also would like to thank you for underlying the crucial role and unavoidable role of Refela, which has to position itself as a model within this development of the SSE, the Social Solidarity Economy, because there are some experiments that have been tented or tried in some African cities. So thank you for illustrating and showing your support to the fact that Refela could mobilize with GSEF lots of energy and call upon the creativity of African women so that the alliance between goals and economic goals and social inclusion can be uh, uh, advocated by Refela within all the local governments where female mayors are present. Now I will invite Madame Dr. Malika Joji Aflan, who was, I was going to say, to say the linchpin of our session. Dr. Malika, thank you. You are special advisor of Refela UCLG Africa. I give you have the floor. Thank you, Madame Chair. Thank you, Madame Secretary General of GSEF. Thank you to our advisor, political, international uh, advisor, uh, Mrs. Rahmatouka. Thank you for your welcoming remarks and for opening remarks. Thank you for this, this. What you said is closely related to our concept note and to the questions that we're asking. And as you know, we want our session to be rich in terms not only of analysis of the issues and obstacles that women are facing that we all know but also we reach in terms of proposals recommendations and sharing of best practices our program is very time uh, limited in time uh, constrained or con we have four communications or speeches before starting the debate so of course these four communications main at enriching the debate. We shall first listen to a testimony of Mrs. Mamoun Bamba, who is a member of Refela, who presents all her apologies because due to some agenda, uh, she has to visit her municipality to some agenda constraints. So she will, she apologizes, Mrs. Mamba. But in order to, uh, as a remedy, or to, she will present the local action and the mobilization in favor of the economic empowerment of women. We propose to you, first of all, a video, a short video that presents the work conducted by a woman mayor who is a leader and president of Refela in terms of support to women for their economic empowerment within the framework of the social and solidarity based economy. We shall, we shall uh, follow with this with three other communications. You shall see that the three other communications are going to be made by men, but have been balanced so uh, um, I will, uh, 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 we have women leaders and we have three men. So we have, well, uh, there is a total parity to share uh, their expertise with us. Mr. Sheikh Gay, whom I had a pleasure to meet in a regional meeting 
and whom I called after this meeting as being the champion of equality. So I would like to, to thank you for being with us. We have Mr. Masbahi, who, who also apologizes, but to have our colleagues who are investing, who will make a small presentation, Mr. Brigo Gauthier, who will make a presentation of the interest of the territorial coaching for the strengthening of economic empowerment of women. And we also have a one colleague, one partner, who represents the Federation of Andalusia Municipalities, Spain, who will tell us about the partnership agreement, uh, the partnership that we have established between Refelas, UCLG Africa, in order to make to move forward in terms of empowerment. We shall follow those four communications with a debate, and we hope that our speakers will respect the time constraint, the time that has been allotted, so there will be more time for the debate. So I give the floor to Drissa to present the video. Drissa Keita. Drissa, you have the floor. Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Madam uh, Chairperson. Good morning, Madam Secretary General of GCEF. And good morning, Mrs. Rahmatuka. And welcome to all of you. As has been underlined by Mrs. Medica Rafran, we have a small short video that we shall display that presents the experiment of the Rafaela president in the achievement of support to women within the Social Solidarity Economy, SSE. Of course, we have launched a campaign for the economic empowerment of women, as we say, and it is good to invite people to do something. But when you do it yourself, the, it's the best example. That's why we have uh, said it, uh, it deemed necessary to show this video. And I hope that this will uh, please you. And the, the Madam President has even been awarded prizes for her work. So we shall see immediately the video. The women processors of cassava, cassava, donation of grinders to women to grind the, the cassava. So association of women processors of cassava, the cassava plant. Donation of grinding machines for cassava. Association of women from donation of farm equipment to the women from the market garden of Caleguera. Donation of farm equipment to the women from the market garden. Association of United Women of Cassemble area <sighs> prize of excellence of the best local elected official 2018 prize of excellence of the best elected official of 2018 And Mrs. Dao, president of Rafaela, the, re the network of local elected women of Africa. So this was the video, says Medica. I just would like to present to you the context. Madam President has been invited to an e attend an event in the USA. And since he had a, a calendar constraint, this event dealt with the economic empowerment of women empowerment of women and Madam President 
has proposed such a video that was very successful that has shown that locally, uh, local uh, uh, female mayors and also male mayors are facing this question of economic empowerment. But one of the messages that Madam President wanted to convey and which I share with you is that the equipment that has been distributed through an association, which also shows that local governments have to work with the local civil society. So this, equip this equipment was very often uh, intended for men, thinking that men, women don't have the capacity to use such equipment. Myself, in the survey that we have conducted and uh, the campaign of African cities favorable to the economic empowerment, I was told by one public uh, officer, Madame, we are not giving, going to give a tractor to a woman. A woman cannot drive a tractor. Whereas in the same region and other regions, women were using tractors. This shows that people, women are maintained in small projects and uh, income generating projects. And I hope that our thinking here consists in proposing how to do this uh, quantum leap in order to strengthen the trust in the economic potential of women and bring them and support them to be structured and have access to a local economy that brings change, brings about change for empowerment, but also the, something that can uh, generate local economic development. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Medica. Of, thank you also, Drisa for displaying this documentary video that is a rich documentary that shows many activities with some uh, activities conducted by some associations. And as we said, the association is one of the forms that, that supports the SSE, the Social Solidarity Economy, which is one of the basis of the conditions for the promotion of SSE. So we shall now move to the communications. Dr. Medica, you have announced four communications, including two supported, made by men. So we'd like to congratulate already these gentlemen. In particular, Cher Kay from Senegal who is called upon to be the first one to speak. Sheikh Gay is the mayor of the Tioton municipality. I don't know if I pronounced well. So you are, you are called like a uh, champion of, for equ of equality by Dr. Malika, who made a nice presentation of you. So you are taking the floor to lift the obstacles to development of female entrepreneurship and the development of SSC in Africa. Mr. Cherguet, Mr. Dear Esquire, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Mayor. Madam Mayor, I would like to salute you and tell all of you good morning or good evening and show really all the pleasure that is mine to participate in this Refila webinar, UCLG African collaboration with GCEF under the virtual forum. I also would like to salute all the stakeholders, all the speakers the, who took the floor before me and those who are going to take the floor after me. I would like to salute Rahmatouka. I would like to salute Dr. Malika Laurence, Angelica. I salute you, all of you. I also would like to express my feeling of pride. And I would like to thank the GCEF. I would like to con congratulate Rafaela and thank Rafaela and UCLG Africa for in uh, associating to this high level debate 
which deals with the issue of social solidarity economy at the heart of the Rafael agenda as a lever for the empowerment of women in Africa. The Africities Summit is still present in my memory because it was a great moment where Rafaela, for Rafaela to think and to uh, create synergy between all of us to make Rafaela a tool of promotion of, of women at the service of development of territories. I'm convinced that women are at the beginning of their uh, of this uh, long path. Without women, nothing can be done. That's why, as a member of Rafaela, I'm convinced that uh, female entrepreneurship in the field of SSE, social solidarity economy, can represent a lever to speed up the economic empowerment of women within the African local governments or even international local governments or communities. I have been asked to make a communication about how to lift the obstacles to the development of female entrepreneurship within the field of social solidarity economy in Africa. For, for, to do this, we need to lift the obstacles which limit the access of women to the economic resources. And we should think about mechanisms in order to promote the integration in the economic sphere. Uh, what are the social and economic obstacles and the uh, red tape? We can mention a few. We have some prejudice and some pressures of social and cultural order. We have the statute, the status of subordination of women in the production in the economic unity units, production and management system. You have the constraints in terms of availability related to motherhood and to the numerous tasks uh, carried out by women. You have financial management and trade that are exclusive domain of women, uh, of women. Women are of men, women are excluded. This has been mentioned by Dr. Malika. You have also the limited revenues. The obstacles related to training and we can mention the le low level of education, the, the obstacles related to training and organization. Both men and women can be today at the, fr at the front line of everything. So there is a fight to be waged in order to, to empower and to strengthen women. There is a difficult access of women to the production factors. The lack of equipment, as has been said earlier, and loans and we, that are just for men. Whereas when you go in the field, most of the players are women. Women should today be able to have land and equipment to participate in the development of the territories. There is a low level of organization of women due largely to, the part, uh, to their illiteracy. So in many localities, women are just doing, uh, are just traders, whereas they are main actors of any activity. There's also the lack of training, managerial training, and the insufficient information and awareness raising, the lack of solid and reliable organization, the fear of risk. It is true that women are great economists, but they are risk averse. Whereas in terms of economy, you have to be, uh, you have to be, be ready to uh, for risk, and there is a lack of supervision. There are, as I said, some prejudice and pressures of social and economic order. The status of subordination of women in the economic units, production and management system. We can also mention the lack of availability related to motherhood and to the numerous tasks. Uh, I said it earlier. The obstacles related to training and organization, the low level of education, the difficult access to the production factors. Yes, we already saw that, that slide. Now the obstacles within the banks. The, the personal contribution that is required 
and high interest rates, which limit the access of women to those loans. You have the, a requirement for collaterals, which represents a limiting factor for access to loans for this uh, generally uh, dis disenfranchised uh, category of people. The inexistence of specific credit policies for women. That's why with, with, with the advent of Mr. Khalifa Sal, mayor of Dakar, we have been able to put in place some revolutionary programs. You have the CEPEM, you have the FODEM program, the Solidarity Municipal Development Fund, you have the municipal credit, and there's also a program called the PARCHE. It is a program of support to families in, in dire straits. So thanks to those policies today, women have been empowered to contribute to the development of territories. You have also the non-accessibility of banks that are, that are generally concentrated in urban areas where the disenfranchised populations are not present. What are the proposals in terms of measures of support to social and solidarity-based economy? Those proposals re rely essentially on the establishment of a support, specific support fund to women entrepreneurs given the specificity of the enterprises that are usually very small enterprises and informal enterprises that are more, much more involved in food processing, cosmetics, catering, etc. And in general, in general, these are informal and vulnerable jobs. And also, this relies on the uh, establishment of a refinancing fund dedicated to women who are facing huge difficulties. I had the opportunity to visit recently some units today, some plants where women are occupying first-rate positions, but they are always facing the same constraints despite the, amb the ambitions that they harbor. They are facing constraints, that's why. These proposals that we have just mentioned can come either from the national government or for the local, from the local governments. And in terms of solutions within the, at the level of the government, I think we can put in place a national fund for the refinancing of the decentralized financing structures and the fund for the financing of female entrepreneurship. So Mr. Khalifa said used to say something we have to learn to, to, to be an entrepreneur. The solutions now within the local government is the establishment of a financing entity for women, like the case of FODEM fund that I spoke about earlier, which, which is an initiative of the city of Dakar, which aims at supporting the project of women and the youth through the fund of support to the decentralized financial structures by we must first finance the training. Many women have been tra trained and then financed in order to finance their activities. And this activity aims at financing projects of women and youth through the fund of support to the decentralized financial support uh, structures I spoke about. Now the recommendations I will just mention a few aspects. The, we, we need more adapted or suitable guarantees for to be required for women. Secondly, we need to simplify the procedures of access to credit. There's a need to put in place a guarantee fund to facilitate the access of women to economic resources. The need to put in place credit lines for the financing of women's activities, coordination of support intended for women and you need to evaluate the credit lines allocated to women. You need to stimulate and develop more the entrepreneurial spirit of women through awareness raising programs, information and communication programs. The need to put in place a literacy program, need to develop technical pro training, and also need to put in place a program of awareness raising to fight against the fact the fact that women are not uh, are not present enough in those in the economic sector i am mayor of my city advisor to the city of dakar 
And also, I'm Delegate General of the RACTES, which is the network of actors of local governments in the field of social and solidarity economy. So I think we have to boost the local and national policies in order to allow women to position themselves and to be uh, to make, put in place some innovative actions that will make it possible. As was said by Rahmatuka, we have to we, women are the future, but women are also the present. Relying on the women is to make sure that so the country will, will be a reality in Africa and the, the upcoming future century, as we say, will be the century of women. The presence of African in those decision-making bodies is due to the presence of women who have to be the driving force and not the last wagon. Really, this is what I wanted to say, to contribute to this forum. Once again, I would like to thank you for involving me in this high level forum, which will certainly contribute and make it possible and to women and to the social solidarity economy to move forward and speed up the development. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor. And for the kind words, I would like to answer Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And also would like to say thank you for this presentation. Well, Dr. Malika will certainly make a small synthesis, but as a conclusion, since we are learning to be entrepreneurs, as has been said, that, uh, and implemented with Mr. Khalifa Sal, the former mayor of Dakar, whom we are saluting. Yes. During this session, you have said that women are really the driving force and they cannot be the last wagon. So you have mentioned nine recommendations in particular that we do not have time to note, but, uh, but uh, that has, this has been already raised by Dr. Malika. This has this and by the JCF, the Secretary General, and Mrs. Rahmat Tukak, who represents the Secretary General, Dr. Medica. Do you have something to say, Dr. Medica? Dr. Medica. Mr. Gay, you are really the champion of equality. Thank you for this communication and thank you for being practical and concrete in terms of proposals. And I note, like you, and like Mr. Mbassi said in particular, he said that entrepreneurship, female entrepreneurship uh, remains the exception and not the rule. And I say that the recommendations that you have made allows, uh, encourages us to move forward and our local governments, but also our governments should take them into consideration. Money is the crux of the war. So, as we say, money is the sinews of war or money is crucial. So we need to share this at the access to resources. Indeed, the access to land, etc. Because even in the social solidarity economy, and Mrs. Laurence can confirm with me that very often in the social and solidarity based economy, men are still better positioned because when they put in place a cooperative in the agricultural sector, they put great entities, cooperative structures, 
for example, for olive trees or almond trees, they can do it because they are owners or landowners, those great or big operatives that are game changers in the local economy because the men are the owners of their land and women cannot manage to have access to those large cooperatives because first of all, they don't have access to the land resources or even when they are, they are not feasible, it's the brothers, the husbands, the fathers who manage their land. So lack of visibility and non-direct management of their goods or their property and in the absence of measures as you have proposed, the recommendations are relevant and we shall certainly take into account this into account within this session. Thank you very much. So concerning the third communication, Dr. Malika, you said that there is a presentation that will be made by about the need, the interest of the coaching for women. So your microphone is muted. It is proposed that Mr. Sergio Castanar will take the floor if he has joined us. Yes, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Sorry for being late. I'm being late. I did not note it well the time, but I hope that this will not prevent us from sharing our experience in some adequate manner. Can I, should I start? So I just would like to remind you that Mr. Sergio Castana, Castagna is coordinator of the Federation of Andalusia Municipalities in Spain, FAMSI, Spain. And he's taking floor about the North-South cooperation in the field of the promotion of female entrepreneurship. The case of the Rafaela UCLG Africa partnerships and FAMSI, Spain. Is it right? Yes. Yes, said Mr. Sergio. I will try in my speech to explain the work, the, the framework in which we are developing, we are doing our work in Morocco, in particular with, with Rafaela and the other partners within the local governments. First of all, I would like to thank Mrs. Malika and UCLG Africa and Rafaela for this invitation. And I will try modestly right to explain our work in Morocco and the vision about the subject of our entity. I am the technical representative in Morocco of the Andalusian Fund for International Solidarity. It was an association of local governments of Andalusia, which has, uh, which is involved in international cooperation. So it has been about almost 20 years that we are present in Morocco in the, in the development area, in the development of projects with municipalities of north of Morocco, in particular, with the region of Tangiers, Tetuan al Hussema, and the oriental region of Morocco. So the subject of the gender, of gender and empowerment of women, economic empowerment of women, is a vital subject. And where we think we have something to say, yeah. In Morocco, why? First of all, due to the fact that we are close to Morocco, there are lots of links of our local Spanish local governments with the lo Moroccan local governments and also our civil society, in particular the civil society in the, of women in, or in feminism or female cooperatives who have lots of relationships with the female leaders in Morocco. But for us, it is a request for our associations also in Andalusia to work also in this field. And also we have some experience 
So we have experience with the work with civil society, okay, in this field. We could talk also, we could talk about an institutional vision of our work. It means that our project, our actions, will always try to promote, to promote, to promote some consulta consultation and learning spaces between the public entity, the municipality, and the civil society, whether the cooperatives or the private sector, in order to encourage the financial autonomy of women, okay? It was always the public aspect in this case, where we do position our, ourselves, okay? And then we could talk of a law-based law vision, the defense of the rights while fighting, of course, in Andalusia, but also in Morocco. It means, it means that women should have all the rights, existing rights, enjoy all the rights that are part of the law, because here in Morocco, but also in Andalusia, sometimes laws we don't uh, have access to our laws, our rights. In terms of interventions from us, and in line with this public vision, okay, we have worked, for example, with the work method uh, consisting in the professional empowerment. This is what we mean, the school project, school-based project. We have some school-based projects where the beneficiaries are only women. For some jobs, and that in the past, but also today, used to be jobs that are very male-dominated, like, so for, for example, gardening. We used to do some school projects in the city of Shabshawan, and also a traditional masonry in Tetuan, some school project where there were, there were some women learning the traditional uh, jobs, and now they have been able to access the job market. You have to know that uh, in Spain, those <coughs> school projects or have been able, or we call them also yard schools or field schools. They are now, now they are it is the municipalities that are behind those field schools. <coughs> and also, in this institutional framework, in the public sector, we have tried to encourage the establishment of three uh, economic, local eco economic development uh, agencies in Larache, Tetuan, and other cities in the north. So the Morocco, the law doesn't uh, uh, provide for the creation of agencies. We ask for the creation of some SDL, which calls a local development society or company. We did not get any answer. So finally, we did it with, with the municipalities. So we did some strategic plans where we have enjoy, inserted the gender aspect in the planning of the territorial economic development of the municipality, okay? I have tried to, and also we have tried to develop some training activities for hundreds of beneficiaries. In the beginning of the, the while we work here with women in Morocco, we worked with the, the UNDP, the gold program of UNDP at, in the oriental region of Morocco. And we have managed to create a network of women, uh, of women in, uh, in collaboration with, with the provinces in order to offer some support for the empowerment of women from the economic standpoint. 
and from the uh, from the institution taking the institutions as a stand as a starting point so we do have local networks for all the services in order to encourage women or offer services to women that's it roughly this is what we have developed in morocco which uh, touches the empowerment of women and then we worked especially on the we have just finished a program that has tried to boost all the gender equality entities and gender-based approach entities with the Moroccan Directorate of Local Government called DGCL, the local, local the Directorate of Local Governments. This is our experience in Morocco. I have to say that we have just signed an agreement, a framework agreement with Refela, and our work, wish is to continue this work because we consider that we really have a good potential to transfer with our partners, like the Andalusian Institute of Women. And we also have to say that FAMSI, our Federation of Andalusian Municipalities, FAMSI co chairs the economic local economic development commission at uclg okay so we're talking of local economic development when you speak about you have to talk about uh, insertion of women or placement of uh, within economic development because otherwise it's not it's not a complete economic development and we are so we will do represent municipalities. We believe in local economic development and, and we believe in the participation of economic participation of women in the economic life. Otherwise, it's not fair. It's not a good thing. And finally, I would like to tell you that we are part now of the commission of the work groups that has created the UN, that has been created by UNDP. So for post-COVID economic recovery, okay, so we are players who offer, provide assistance and which will enrich this guide that will be published soon where resilience and participation of women in the economy is a principal uh, element of this guide. So this will be in the agenda of all of us, if it is not already the case. So I will not extend too much, I will not talk too much. So sorry for my French. It is a, a span, uh, Spanish style kind of French, but thank you very much. If you have questions, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sergio Castagnar. So, in the name of Refela, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank you for being able to sign an uh, official partnership with UCLG Africa to make sure that indeed we can uh, boost the empowerment of women. So what has been really interesting to note is that you have mentioned an institutional vision make, make it, that has made it possible to implement those activities and this is and this this is part of the institutional and legal supervision that we have to be that all the women should benefit from all the entities should benefit from and all and we should uh, uh, commit ourselves to the local social and solidarity based economy because whether there are some forms and some models like the associations and cooperatives 
that are not always, from the illegal standpoint, supported or recognized in terms of national public policies. And here you are highlighting, indeed, something that could be considered as an obstacle in the implementation of solidarity based if the groups or the forms of a grouping of women that that cannot that, that of women who cannot benefit of this recognition you spoke about the defense of the rights of women and especially the methodology and the yard the yard or the field schools that are incubators and you have uh, supported the program already mentioned by the mayor, the, the mayor of one district of Dakar, who spoke of training as being an obstacle indeed to the empowerment and the full bloom of women. And you spoke of some jobs that have been mentioned as uh, of some male dominated jobs like uh, mason, masonry, and here, we they, they, they break the molds or, and because there were some models that were not favorable to the development of women through the practice of the income generating activities. So Mr. Malika, I would like to give you the floor and we'll ask Mr. Sergio from Ramsey to still believe in the insertion, in the placement of, in the, in the participation of women, and in the participation of the economic and of our territories. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sergio Castagna, for presenting the framework of your interventions in Morocco, in the north of Morocco. And of course, you have some very rich experience and very practical experience in terms of empowerment of women Thank you for uh, talking about the participation of women at the local level, because you do represent Andalusian municipalities, which participate with municipalities from North Africa. I know so that you work in other countries of Africa, like Mauritania. So thank you for your intervention. What I would like to say concerning the, the state, pro, the progress status of our partnership, the signing of the MOU that was this being discussed since Africities after becoming mature has been signed just on the eve of this unfortunate pandemic in March. It means that we have signed at the end of January of this year, 2020, this memorandum of understanding in Seville, Spain. This memorandum, this, uh, memorandum has emerged, has become a reality. So FAMSI, the Federation of Municip Municipality of Andalusia has signed this partnership agreement and we have made progress since we have designed the project and we have launched because since the work program that we have put in place uh, within the program of African cities favorable to the economic empowerment of women. So I have a project underway and we have launched what we call the call for manifestation of interest and we would like to seize this uh, opportunity to call upon African cities in Morocco, in Senegal, in Gabon and other countries to subscribe to this campaign because we know that the world organization, the World Bank, the ADB, the African Development Bank, etc. have well underlined that the empowerment that is expected from the agenda of the SDGs and, and to which this uh, empowerment cannot take place without the economic empowerment of women. So please, the more numerous the cities, the more we can create a movement of African cities mobilized around this uh, question, this issue, and thank you Madam Chair and Mr. S Thank you, Sergio. Indeed, uh, the last, very last uh, presentation about uh, what, what has been said is very important. And it is a very good thing to, re 
to mention this because all the cities that have not yet subscribed all that have answered so because it is form that you have sent to the cities and this form should be filled in with the commitment of cities to participate in this campaign for the empowerment of women. Thank you, Doctor, Mr. Sergio Castagnal. So in the program, I think we have reached the end of the communications, Dr. Domenica. If, can we start, if it is the case, can we start the debate? I would like to give the floor to Mr. Gauthier Brigo to stand in, for, or not to stand in, but uh, we cannot, we miss the fact that the Vice President of the Oriental Region could not join us. He apologized for this. There was, he also had a visit of important personalities, so he has not been able indeed to make it and to attend our session. Maybe Mr. Brigo Gauthier, because he works in this region, he works on the issue of social and solidarity based economy. So they have put in place some activities, in particular through a methodology that is very important that has been developed within UCLG Africa, which is the territorial coaching. Brigo, Mr. Brigo Gauthier, Madam Chair, we can give him the floor. Mr. Brigo Gauthier, are you? I am with you. Yes, and we hear you and we see you, Mr. Brigo. Thank you very much, Miss. Thank you, Malika. Thank you all. Indeed, I will take a few minutes to share with you the tool that Malika has presented. It is territorial coaching, which is a, an original, innovative approach of participatory approach that we have started about a dozen years ago in the oriental region of Morocco and in four countries of Africa. And we will show the link between territorial coaching and so, so the society based economy as a tool to reown the to have the, the citizens regain the ownership of their territories. So we in our experience with the elected officials and with the civil society actors, we have been able to see that the dialogue and uh, uh, there's a lack of dialogue, even if the territories have important resources that can be mobilized by the actors of social solidarity economy, but there's some fears and some behaviors, some attitudes that are sometimes behind the resistance uh, to the implementation that is a difficult implementation at the local level. It is really in order to, uh, in order to put in place th these policies that UCLG Africa with the uh, agency of the Oriental region and with the, the University of the Oriental region have developed this approach. So concretely, what is territorial coaching all about? It's not a manual of procedures to be applied in the field. It is just a person, a person, a, moder a moderator that we call, that has been trained that we call the territorial coach. So everybody knows the coaching in the scientific field, in the field of entrepreneurship, in the personal field also, and the coaching now also for teenagers. So we have proposed a, a coach for the territories. These are people who have been trained, who come to support the local governments and the players of social and solidarity based economy in order to improve, establish the relationship of tra trust in the best conditions of synergy and trust. So today, this approach of territorial coaching, what does it allow the companies to do? To do? It makes it possible to support some national programs of social solidarity economy, because often the difficulty uh, is to articulate the regional local level so the link between 
the citizens. So a project that starts without the beneficiaries is often a project that doesn't meet directly the expectations of the beneficiaries. So there's a need to strengthen the social cohesion and to have a regional economy based on the SSE and the need to reinvent the relationships with the low local elected officials and the multi-partner we are stronger when we are together and the need to mobilize public private resources and we need to make some uh, economies of scale and also take as a starting point the local uh, this local uh, expertise and we need to take stock of the of the local expertise which is often forgotten and this comes in the toolbox and we need to look for all the territory the potential of the territory of the, the offered by the territories this is the, the work of the territorial coaches that I wanted to share. There are about 60 territorial coaches that have been trained in about 15 countries in Africa, one five, in the, who are based in Dakar in particular. And the city of uh, Dakar has started, opened recently a territorial coaching and also in the region of Kaolak, Senegal, in order to support the social society based economy. So Kaolak is in the salt, in the salt the sector. So there is a need to put in place some synergy and to improve the revenues or income of those cooperatives. And also in Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire and other countries. So this can facilitate the view so when there is an expert but who's not a consultant, an expert who will support you be, and we see that there can be some interesting uh, results. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brigo, for, for highlighting this tool, this uh, tool that makes it possible for citizens to regain ownership over their territories. So we'd like to congratulate the cities that have been able to put in place for this method of support of the social solidarity based SSE, social, social solidarity economy in the city of Dakar. But we would like other cities and countries to benefit also, to benefit from this support in terms of coaching and the need for the, and to implement the SSE. Dr. Medica, I have noted in particular, I've noted the media or the goals that can bring to a good coaching or a good coach of a territory to do his work, it, we need to have many partnerships. And this allows me to piggyback on the commitment made at the highest level by the president of USLG World when he was taking the floor uh, at the United Nations. He said that USLG is part of, a, contributes to the the development of multilateralism and many personalities of UCLG, even if in Africa, have supported this multilateralism as a way to make sure that not only the challenges or the inequalities that have increased with COVID that we're exper experiencing can be phased up, phased up too. But in addition to this, we have just understood that it is also in terms of territorial coaching, it is one element not to be neglected. So Dr. Malika, I would like to give you the floor. I just would like to say and inform you 
between the Secretariat of Refela and the Territorial Coaching. We are working in close collaboration. We do some collaboration that is being that is being experienced in the field, but we had some deadlock or some blockage, blockage because of this pandemic, but it is just postponed. And we hope to master this pandemic in order to be able to travel in the field and also put at the heart of this coaching uh, and, we, and uh, we need to work for the economic empowerment of women. Thank you. So we'd like to know, so how much time do we still have available because the communications, the, and I said that in the chat, there are some reactions, there are some good contributions, by the way. And I would like to thank all the people who are contributing through the chat. How much time do we still have uh, for the debate? Well, listen, Madam Chair, I think that we, are, we have almost reached, since we have started a bit late, we can uh, stay a bit longer, so 10 or 15 additional minutes. Concerning, we have taken too much time. It is uh, one fifty-nine here, so we should have two, one minute left, or let's say about fifteen minutes left, in order to ask a few questions and close this. Okay, if if everybody agrees, and some if some people want to take the floor, we still have. 10 minutes for the debate and five minutes for the closing remarks. So I saw in the chat earlier, maybe, I don't know if I have asked, I think it's Madame Reina Isabel, who said, is it possible uh, a bank of social economy? Maybe this is a question that we can ask from the Secretary General, we can, who, says that the uh, who uh, works on a daily basis, Madame Secretary General, is it possible to create a bank for social solidarity economy, Madame Secretary General? You invite me to answer this question. I think it is a question that I think we should turn to all the countries and all to the, all the local governments. I think it is possible to create a bank of social solidarity economy. There are lots of uh, examples around many countries. It's not a bank of social solidarity economy. Economy, we don't need an international bank, it's, it's a bank, which we need the movement of the local solidarity uh, players who are play, uh, present in the field. We need the banks of the social solidarity economy that, that are territorialized or localized, this could also be based on sector spe sector specific or region specific, but especially national nationwide. I think that currently there are many African banks, in particular in Uganda, like uh, the Santander Bank, supports uh, the producers, male and female producers who are working in the countryside but also in Canada and in particular in Quebec, there is a group of banks and financial institutions who support uh, essentially, first of all, the social solidarity based companies. So it is a question that we should ask within UCLG Africa to see how local governments in collaboration with their local governments can become the initiators of those banks specialized in SSE. So I think it is important to meet the needs of the players and uh, the companies in terms of social solidarity economy. I think Mr. Gay from the Senegal said earlier that it is very important to make a co-creation or joint creation with the actors of the social solidarity economy so that these banks can really meet their needs and their expectations. 
Well, we have lots of experience in this field. If you want, we can provide you at a later stage with some documentation, especially with, with the res more recent exper experiment in Korea. There's a financial institution called the Solidarity Based Foundation that acts with the banks and the small financial institutions that support the social and economic solidarity based economy. I think that there's not only one single model, but I think we need more diversified models in function of the needs and of the local players. Right, Madam Secretary General. And we thank you for putting, making available to us through the UCLG Africa and you, Befela, all this documentation that would make it possible for us to stem or to solve, overcome the problems of access to financial resources, like what has been mentioned by Mr. Mayor earlier, which are really an obstacle, non uh, significant obstacle to the implementation of our SSE, our social solidarity economy. So thank you, Madam Secretary General. So are there other requests for the floor? Yes. Yes, Mr. Abu Bakar Silla from Côte d'Ivoire. I wanted, first of all, to thank uh, or salute everybody. And since we are uh, at the end, I will go fast. I'm Babu Bakari, uh, certified territorial coach, certified territorial adosso, uh, working at the municipality within the African network. So let's talk about the subject of the day. We have a good experience within the Akobo municipality where we have a program for the uh, synergy between the local, the territorial coaching and solidarity-based economy. With this process, we have talked about the empowerment of women, and this has made it possible to identify some project through some community-based approach that will make it possible for women to express themselves so we had to conduct, uh, we had conducted the survey with 5,000 women. It has, so we have been able to identify 5,000 income generating activities and the support of, to these women, we have, because we have said it is important to work, to work on the approach, on the participatory approach and to network these women in order to facilitate their uh, collaboration. So about, so I think the territorial coaching is a tool that is on the right path. So in order, in order to make it short, we need to empower women. We need to make available to women some funds, but what is important is the question of support and coaching has the need to highlight in the territories, the territorial coaching. Because if women are not coached, if they're not supported on a daily basis, on a regular basis, not only do they will not subscribe, it will be very difficult. That's why advocacy with the local governments is important. This will allow local governments to meet the needs of the populations and to see the evolution and to fight poverty and to avoid the impoverishment, impoverishment of women. I did not want to be too long, but it's a reality. So the economic Economic territorial governments are very good neighbors. Recently, we had a conference in Cote d'Ivoire where some uh, mayors who show solidarity have tried to understand and to promote this tool in the 
territories of Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you, Mr. Territorial Coach. Maybe Dr. Melika, after this exchange and this sharing of best practices of the Abobo municipality, I would like to give the floor. There's a lady, Mrs. Aminata Diop, was asked for the floor. I think it, maybe she will be the last speaker before the concluding remarks. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, quite. Absolutely. You are right. One last. So, Mrs. Aminata Diop, thank you, ma'am, Director. I would like to salute the presence of all the participants of the presence of the direct, the Deputy Director, Mrs. Rahmatouka, and congratulate all the speakers for the quality of their presentations. Mr. Sherge, good morning, Mr. Mayor. And concerning the question of Mrs. Maimouna Isabella, I think that Mr. Mayor has proposed a battery of recommendations. And on this battery, you have the creation of a fund, of the fund that is specific for the uh, female project. I would like to talk about the, the prospect that is offered through the guidance law that is being established in Senegal. And this guidance law proposes the creation of a uh, trust fund that is special for the, or some endowment for the uh, women in the social and solidarity based economy. So I think that with the actors of the social, of the SAC, we have tried to put in place uh, some inclusion fund for the inclusion of those players. And I would, we need a dedicated bank. Yes, we need a dedicated bank for the funding of this, uh, this rather important economic model. They are not such specialized banks. There are only some uh, specialized, uh, there are not, not, not yet some specialized banks in the field of SAC. And we have to create such banks. This is what I want to say. And I would like to thank the GCA, GCF for in associating the city of Dakar. Dakar is a member of the GCF. We have just uh, subscribed or joined GCF to Laurence and Benjamin, whom I'd like by the way to thank, and also the actors of local uh, government. Thank you once again. Thank you, Dr. Malika. I think we have reached the end of our meeting. So we wanted, before uh, leaving, we would like to thank Madam Secretary General of GSEF for attending. For, can, I would like to say maybe some word. Yes, Malika. Does Madam Secretary General want to say some closing remarks? Yes, of course. Because I have to write to live, to live now, now. Because I have to uh, join the plenary of our forum. Thank you for organizing this session that is really that deals with a very important uh, subject and a major challenge of for women. As I said, I have a lot. I have learned a lot about the initiatives and the policies that are put in place with the local governments. But I think it would be very important to organize a systematic exchange between the members of the local governments of Rafaela and Rafaela to see how you can really meet the, the answer the different questions that are key questions in order to have successful empowerment of women in Africa. I think we are convinced that social, 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 social solidarity economy can play an important role in order to guarantee the social economic empowerment of women in Africa. We saw, every, as we saw everywhere around the world, but I think we must also organize and prepare some strategies that are adapted to each, to each local context. That's why I think it is very important 
already the many speakers have spoken about the co the joint creation of public policies and and measures of support to those female entrepreneurs in the SSC field. I think with the support of the local governments and in particular with the members of the REFLA. I think that the joint creation of public policies and the measures to help women entrepreneurs of social solidarity based economy, I think could be lead really to a productive and efficient strategy in order to empower women and especially the entrepreneurs who are engaged in the proposed in a productive sector or agriculture or in the different sectors of the of the economy i think that this uh, co-creation of uh, public policies and support policies you will really contribute to gender equality which is a powerful actor of, to, of the stimulation of the long-term growth that will re really generate a model of development much more inclusive and sustainable for african societies so i think we are very willing to, very glad to contribute with you and with refila to to rise up to this historic challenge and allow me to express my thanks for this collaboration within and within the forum and in particular my thanks to all the speakers and to the participants in particular to the organizer of this section and to all the participants thank you very much and see you soon and excuse, excuse me because i have to leave i have to join uh, plenary five thank you madam secretary general Thank you, Madam Secretary General. So we have reached the end. So can we listen? The Mr. Mayor, very quickly, the champion of equality. I just would like to join my voice to you for this nice session. And I think we have done a good job. I think after what um, what has been said at the mayor of Dakar, Madame Soham El Wadini, um, an advocate of social economy, has thought about the feasibility of the social economy. So these are questions which, which are being thought about deeply in the city of Dakar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Mrs. Rahmatou Kasso, maybe in the name of the Secretary General of UCLG Africa, you want to say something? Thank you, Madam Mayor. We would like to thank the Secretary General of GSEF and Mr. Mayor Sergei and Madam Director of FADEM and all the players and Malika for this nice session. And for all the all the things that we heard this morning, shows that the the theme of women empowerment is an important. This requires a paradigm shift. I I would like to mention one point very quickly. What we the the take home message from this debate uh, is first of all the co-creation of public policies concerning uh, concerning uh, social social solidarity economy should encourage uh, and the definition of those public policies locally because as we said because we need some we need some alliance we need some alliance of the organizations who work on these issues, SSE issues. The second point that is important that Mrs. Diop has mentioned is the uh, legal framework. There's a framework that should be favorable 
So if we, we, need, we now we have a uh, in, enabling legal framework, and now in, in some African countries, we are defining this framework. The third, the next element is the supervision, the coaching. The coaching is important. Gauthier spoke about it, and Sergio Castagnar spoke about it, and the solidarity-based funding or financing. We have this, the issue of the solidarity banks, but we should not limit ourselves ourselves to this, because the social solidarity economy. This is different from the classical entrepreneurship. So the experiments, as Mrs. Secretary General, should be localized based on our realities in order to have some support. We spoke about the all the capacity building part with the incubators. Yes, the company. The, so I think we have uh, import interesting range in terms of supervision and the system of guarantees. We spoke about it and the idea of the the Solidarity Foundation in Korea should lead us to think, in addition to the financing structure or entity, we should have some guarantee. Is it a foundation or what? But we have to take into account the, spe the specificity of those organizations. So we shall, by the way, uh, convey all those conclusions to the USLG Africa Secretary General in order to have this uh, this uh, empowerment economic empowerment issue. Thank you, Mrs. Rahmat Okaso. So, in the name of uh, Mrs. Bakura Dao, the president of Refila, I would like to thank all the participants who have been who have been willing to participate to participate in this session and not not repeat myself on solidarity, social solidarity economy as a lever of the economy of... And I would like simply to say, all the contributions go in the direction in order to better deepen the interactions between the social economy with the participation, the citizens, and in particular, we're talking about the empowerment of women, which represent uh, proactive investment or involvement. This autonomy, this solidarity, and this uh, collective dimension, supported by the SAC, which should be a dimension, and which should take into account uh, into account the the constraints that are particular to all those entities, all those the local and subnational governments. So Mrs. Medica, I think that uh, since you are at the heart of this session, you have taken note of all the contributions, all the recommendations, all the suggestions that have been made in order to enrich and have this issue move forward, which is at the heart of the campaign supported by uh, Rafael. So we shall ask you to give us at a later stage this synthesis that you, so that each city present here, even the cities that have not been able to make it, can really uh, know about all the things that have been said here, and uh, so that everybody can at a later stage act in order to implement this so social solidarity economy in each local territory. So I would like want once again to thank you and wish you a good, a safe, uh, a safe uh, uh, day back home. So I'm joining this session in the name of Mrs. Bakura Dao. And I tell you, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and have a safe trip back and good end of Friday for the Muslims, Muslim listeners. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good, thank you. Thank you very much.